Hey everybody, I'm Mike Sattel, and in this lesson, I'm gonna walk you through in great detail the procedure for taking practice tests. Practice tests are an essential part of your prep, but it's also a part that you can easily mess up if you don't really know what you're doing. So make sure you've got a plan for those practice tests. They are a really important part of your prep. So the first thing you should be doing is downloading the Blue Book app, which is the College Board's official app. It is how you're gonna take those digital uh, SATs. So it's also how you're gonna take the real SAT, so it's really good to have that ready to go and we're going to use that to take the practice test and get used to the formatting. I have another lesson that goes through how to download that, so make sure you watch that if you need to. But assuming you've done that, before you take a, your first practice test, I highly recommend that you use the test preview feature to kind of just experiment with how everything works, where all the buttons are, what you can click, what you can't. It's a really great way to just get used to the formatting before you dive into the test so you're not wasting test time learning where everything is. Those questions in the test preview do not have answers. The SAT does not provide them, but I do have a playlist that goes through those questions. It's in the description, so if you're curious what you got right and wrong there, you can go ahead and, and watch that playlist. The answers and wording of the questions are slightly different in some cases, but it's enough to give you the, the gist of the question and get you the right answer, so feel free to watch that if you want. But more important, I want you experimenting with the features. Uh, you can cross out answer choices. You should figure out how to do that. You can bookmark questions so that as you're going through if you have extra time at the end you know which questions to go back to so I want you experimenting with that but as we'll talk about later those things are not saved so once you submit your scores all that stuff is gone you can't go back and be like which questions did I bookmark so we'll need to have a paper record of that as well so we'll talk more about that in a second but I also want you experimenting in math with the Desmos calculator that is built into the app itself and there is a reference chart for all of the geometry formulas that I need you to know where it is so you can quickly get those formulas when needed there are some other features like highlighting and annotating for the reading section, but I don't find those to be particularly helpful, but you can experiment with those as well. But once you are comfortable with the app, it is time to get ready for a long practice test. So first, gather supplies. Make sure you have everything you need. Obviously, you're going to need whatever laptop or tablet you're taking the test on. And make sure that it is fully charged. Yes, you should have your charger nearby, but you really want to use this as a test run for your technology as well, because during the test, there's no guarantee you'll be able to plug anything in so you want to see is your laptop going to be able to hold a charge for about three hours while you take this exam so let it let it test that out too so fully charge it see how good it is but have the charger ready just in case you'll also need some low-tech stuff like pencils paper and I do recommend a handheld calculator like this one is a basic scientific calculator I find it very easy to do arithmetic on a handheld calculator rather than opening the Desmos uh, app in the in the blue book app so just just uh, having a, a hard one isn't required, but it is a little easier sometimes to just hit some buttons. Um, but I do want to talk about the paper a little bit because I think that's an important part. On the real test, you will get scratch paper, so you should use that for both reading and math. But I also think for practice tests, it's especially important for two main reasons. Number one, uh, sometimes things go wrong. So you, I've, I've heard stories of people taking a full practice test, submitting their answers, and then for some reason it doesn't get uploaded to College Board, and then it's like you never took the test. So I'm going to put a link to a kind of form you can print or you can just kind of copy it yourself, basically that lets you record your answers on paper as well. That way, if something goes wrong, you have all your answers and you can just reopen the test, enter them all really, really quickly without changing anything, and then have your scores submitted another time. So I think it's a really good idea because if you mess this up or the computer messes it up, then yeah, you might have just wasted three hours of your life and that's not really good. So I want you to have this backup just in case. You wouldn't need this for the real test, but you would want it for a practice test just in case. You also want paper to do the five finger formula. I have a whole lesson about what this is, but basically it is a way of keeping track of your wrong answers using your hand and you will put that on the page and that is a way to make sure that you get into the hard module for both reading and math. We only can get a certain number wrong and if we don't get into the hard module, our score is capped at about a 1200 total, 600 per section. So it's very important that we have a record of of how we were thinking and what we were thinking we were gonna get wrong during the test. And so watch that video about the five finger formula if you haven't already. That's all part of just getting ready to take a practice test. Then where are you gonna take it? Find a good location. 
I definitely think you need to be sitting at a desk. That's how you're gonna be taking it in school. So no sitting on your bed, no sitting on a couch. It's nice and comfortable. Find a desk, find a place where you can put your feet flat on the floor and sit like you're at school. It really helps psychologically to be taking a test in a very serious way if you are sitting in a way that kind of con is conducive to learning and conducive to thinking. So sitting at a desk, very important. I also think you should have a nearby outlet just in case your computer is running low on charge. You can grab your charger and plug it in very quickly. But also, where, whether you're at home or whatever, just tell people, tell people you're about to take the test. Make sure they're aware so that your parents aren't bothering you, your siblings aren't coming in. Tell everyone to leave you alone. It's, it's about two hours, but maybe tell them three so you can take that break in the middle. So uh, make sure people are aware. Otherwise, you're gonna be yelling up the stairs. They're gonna be asking you if you did your homework. Just tell people that this is a very important part of your studying and hopefully they will understand and leave you alone. Similarly, Get all your pets out of the room. No cats walking on the table, no dogs barking and licking you. You gotta be able to be distraction free. So that doesn't work if you've got animals all around you. Similarly, you can't listen to music. You're not gonna be able to listen to music during the test, so you cannot listen to music during your practice test. Don't create an environment that's gonna be different from the real environment. And obviously, Turn off your phone. You do not want people texting you. You don't want notifications going. So turn off whatever you can so that no one is distracting you. However, all that said, I do not recommend that you find a place that is completely silent because the real test will not be completely silent, especially now that everyone is digital testing. When you take the real exam, most people are gonna be in a room with other people who are testing at slightly different paces. So they're gonna be ending sections before you. They're gonna be taking their breaks and moving in and out of the room. People are gonna have problems with their technology. They're gonna to need to plug things in. So there's gonna be little conversations going on around you. So I don't think that you need to practice testing with complete silence. That's not how the real test is gonna go. So find maybe a place in a library where there's background noise, maybe a coffee shop, something like that, so that you can kind of get used to a little bit of distraction. But no one should be yelling your name and tapping you on the shoulder. You want to be left alone, but just having a little bit of noise around you is okay. Then hopefully now it's finally time to take the test. Uh, some big pieces of advice here. First of all, just avoid long pauses and breaks. So you can pause the practice test, but I, I don't recommend that. That's not how the real test is going to go. So you want to find a time in your schedule where you can sit and at least do all the reading and all the math. There there is a break in between the two sections, so that's okay to take that, but you really don't want to um, get used to these long stretches where you're not testing. You want to build your endurance, and that's a big part of the SAT. You should also show your work on paper. The FFF stands for that five-finger formula. Like I said, this is not going to be completely saved. So anything, any work that you do in the digital app, the Blue Book app, is not going to be saved and given back to you later when you submit your scores. You'll know what questions you got right and wrong. You'll know what answers you put but you won't know what answers you crossed out. You won't know what answers or questions you had trouble with. So there are different ways to keep track of that. The five figure formula being a big one and that answer form that I told you to print out, that can also help you too. So make sure that you are saving your work so that way you can go and back later and look at and see what you did and did wrong because it's really important that we have a record of how we think about these questions as we're doing them. Another good, good reminder is that, that you should never leave a question blank. Even if you run out of time, you gotta save like 10 seconds, 20 seconds to go and just hit a letter for every single question that you're, you're not getting a chance to do because there's no penalty for wrong answers. So just guess, maybe you'll get it right. And you'll get a couple extra points. Similarly, don't forget the Desmos is built in. Lots of people end up doing a ton of algebra for no reason. The Desmos calculator is really, really useful. So use it. It's a graphing calculator. Lots of stuff that you would have to do by hand in math class in school, you can use the calculator for. So keep reminding yourself that it's there. If you haven't already, watch my strategy lesson on the Desmos calculator so you can learn what it does. It's really, really powerful. And more importantly, just kind of fight for every point, not just in math. You really don't want to just casually be taking a practice test. They're so important for your prep. So you want to treat it like it's the real thing. And on the real thing, you would fight for every single point so that hopefully you don't need to take it again. So you want to treat it the same way. And part of that is going to mean quitting strategically. If you have a question that is just taking too much time or you don't think you'll be able to answer, then pick a letter randomly, guess, and move on so that you don't run out of time on other stuff at the end of the section. This is especially important in reading where those passage-based questions can slow you down, but they're really easy questions at the end of each section. So you want to make sure you get to those.
The rest of this hopefully is very simple. Submit and score uh, the, the test. This is all gonna happen in the app for you, so just follow whatever instructions they give you at the end to submit your scores. Uh, you will need to get out of the app to go see those scores, so you're gonna go to mypractice.cv.org. You're gonna have to log in and it'll be there, but hopefully everything works out well. You might need to give it a couple minutes to actually score everything and display, but if there is a problem, this is why I want you to have that backup answer form, because then you can just go back into the app, restart the test, and just quickly enter all the answers that you had previously. Don't change any of them. Don't redo any questions. Just resubmit it, and hopefully you'll be able to get an actual score. This does happen occasionally, and it would really, really suck if you took a three hour, two hour test and then boom, all of your work is gone and then you have to, you've spoiled a test and you didn't get anything to show about it. You didn't get any scores. When you review the test, it's very important that you take it seriously as well. I'm gonna have a whole separate lesson that goes into much more detail about what a test review looks like, but there are basically three ways you can do it. You can go on Khan Academy. They do have a detailed explanations um, of most of the questions and they're pretty good. They're not the, always the most efficient way to solve things, but they're decent. Um, um, the College Board also lets you click and review questions within the College Board practice uh, website, um, but I don't think that those explanations are very good, so I don't recommend that. But of course, my channel is really great. My website and channel are really great for reviewing practice tests. I have a video explanation of literally every single official question, and I will always show you the most efficient way to do it, including strategic ways that Khan Academy and the College Board tend to avoid. Things like using the calculator, using the plug points and new equation strategy, the dumb summary strategy, all stuff that you can get from my strategy series on my YouTube channel. But one thing I think no matter how you review it, uh, I recommend that you save the score details page that kind of looks like this as a PDF. Basically the College Board website just logs you out a lot. It's, it doesn't have a long time before you're, you're kicked out. So it's very easy to just get frustrated co constantly logging back in. So just save it as a PDF. It'll have all your answers. It'll have the correct answers. And then you can kind of go back and forth. Maybe even want to print that out so you have a hard thing to to kind of write on as you go over your questions. But um, like I said, I'm gonna have another lesson that goes into much more detail about what reviewing looks like, but this is just the gist. Hopefully, this gives you a lot to think about. I think the one thing I wanna kind of end on is that practice tests are a really important part of your prep. So you have to take them seriously. You can't just casually take practice tests. You have to make them a, a big event in your prep schedule. And hopefully, I kind of gave you ideas on how to do that, uh, the environment you test in, the preparedness that you have, the supply that you have, the ways you think about questions, all of that should be something that you're thinking about beforehand so you're not just diving in blindly to a practice test. Because once you run out of practice tests in that blue book app, that's it. You've got no more and now you might still need to prep and improve your scores. So make sure too, when you review those tests, you go to my, my channel, my website. I think you will find that it is the best way to review the practice tests. Uh, so that's enough for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this helped. And remember, when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less, settle for more.